love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our Prince of Peace, our Majesty of Majesties, our hero of heroes, icon of icons. He alone is the carpenter of the ages who demands and commands his obedience to embrace his word anew as it is written in the word of God, or he will shove uh, diarrhea shit dung crap pies up their nose like a rubber hose, says the Lord in Malachi 2, in preparation for his kingdom age covenant that has now come. And I am one like Moses, line by line, precept by precept, would a strong and mighty one come forth, giving the covenant 10,000 plus times, ignored, everything I've done has been in vain, Isaiah 49, 4 says so. And so in this hour, if, if things are not turned around, this world will utterly be destroyed. There will be no birds, no fish, no, uh, uh, no mankind left, Zephaniah 1-1, one, one, the earth will be in pieces, never to rise again, Isaiah 24. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24, uh, 22, that unless his word came forth anew, he said that uh, no flesh could be saved. Only his word alone can cut time short because that's what he said that would happen in the latter days when the shattering of the power of the holy people happens because the word of God has come again to Israel in the latter days as it is written in Jeremiah 31.1. And now they are Chrislam, Isaiah 62.2, their brand new name, because they have inherited all mankind. For the Lord God Almighty, uh, you, unless you have the Lord God who is the Lord God of all mankind, you have a false God. Unless you have the Jesus who is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man of John 10, you have a false God. Unless your God has unconditional love, you have a false God. There is no such thing as conditional love. And if your God is a respecter of men, likes you best, you have a false God. So it's time to get away from religion because when his covenant comes, him saying, I'm your God, you are my people, I forgive your iniquity, will never remember it again. Sending Satan to the pit for a thousand years, Daniel 12, 1. Then he says to all people, I'll write my law and my love on your hearts. Beyond that, no one will even need to be taught of me anymore, says the Lord God. For once you know he's unconditional love, there is nothing. Because unless love is loyal and faithful and committed and devoted and adores, then it's not even love at all. This is the mystery that is now revealed and ripped off all the nations of the earth. From this latter day, crystal mountain reflecting the sapphire sea. And it's time that our voices uh, replay the soundtrack of the summer of the Lord's happiest uh, floodgate opening to pour out his spirit of love upon all people. A flood of his love is, is a deluge, but all that have their uh, arms not open to receive, he cannot fill the cup of a cup filled with nonsense, filled with rhetoric, filled with uh, absolute garbage. Uh, the, the feasts in modern day world uh, have gone rancid. And the Lord says, if you do not embrace that which purifies uh, and lifts up my kingdom, then there comes that up your nose hose thing. And that's not very nice because the Lord is saying, I am your God, you are my people, I forgive you and I will never remember it again. Who's going to tell me that that's not what will prepare his name? Because it is addressed correctly to Israel and all mankind. Because the truth is, 2,000 years ago, Christians switched things around. They grabbed, uh, stole the Hebrew books, and then they stole their identity and started teaching themselves that we are Israel and all the prophecy was written for us. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that in the latter days, the Lord God would be the Lord God of Israel and all families of Israel and all mankind. And all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. But here's the problem, Jeremiah 31 and Jeremiah 32, at one time were just one solid covenant. But what happened, the scribes came along and numbered it all and divided it into two separate chapters as if the first chapter held the entire covenant.
And the entire covenant was addressed to Israel and all mankind, proving that uh, Christianity is the biggest cult of them all. And now I come forth as the strong and mighty went to tear down, pull down, to bring up, lift up the valley so that we can ascend unto the sapphire sea. And when all else fails, you got to do like me. Put on your Hawaii shirt. Take a vacation under the vortex of vortexes. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, for all not looking heavenwards. Don't be so earthly minded that you're no heavenly good. For the sea is singing your name and the Lord is whispering over you as the roaring lion of Zion who's purring as softly as a little itty bitty kitty's teeny weeniest little bitty purr of joy, purr of happiness, because he knows it's one heart at a time, inch by inch. Uh, there's 18 inches between here and here, and we got to take it from here and we got to put it there. Unless we do that, we cannot beat the sword into the sickle to learn the ways no more of war no more. Isaiah 2 and Micah 4, two places say the same thing because God was emphasizing it. And for that reason, we must beat our conditional love into unconditional love in order to learn the ways of war no more. And therefore, upon this latter day mountain, people will beat the sword into the sickle because wide is the way unto hell and it's paved with our conditional love as we practice letting it wax cold, practice becoming desensitized, practice uh, every day rationalizing, justifying why it's okay not to love, why it's okay not to forgive, why it's okay not to be nice to people, why it's okay to be a living grump, why it's okay to be critical and judgmental, why it's okay to, to be talking condescendingly to other people that don't believe like you and you think that you're a loving person. Hypocrites, 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 saith Daniel of Windsor, Ontario. I am the one from the north. Uh, Isaiah 41, and I am from Canada, if that counts for anything. I am the alcoholic Shiloh, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, whose uh, teeth are milky white because they're fake. And I am the alcoholic of Zechariah 3, standing there with barf all over himself before the Lord, the writer of uh, the flying scroll, Zechariah 5. And God lit a lamp for me, never was plugged in. That was the lamp candlestick of Zach Zechariah 4, and it was never plugged in for seven minutes. I am the alcoholic of Habakkuk 2, King James. Um, line by line, precept by precept, would that writer come forth. And the vision was written for the appointed time at the end and written plainly on the tablets, so all those reading it may run at God's command. I command you in the name of love to leave all the terrors behind. The wheat must come with me, for our Lord is now manifest his uh, prophecy of Amos 7 for in giving his covenant to all mankind proving that he has loved us all exactly equally what has happened now we have proven that we have nothing but desolate heritages Isaiah 49 8 and it is my job to reassign that I am the spiritual leader of this whole damn world and nobody will give me the time of day that's okay because as we're going down in the ship since I can't possibly try to turn back the battle at the gates of hell because no one's paying any attention I only preach to white noise only if I'm lucky if one video gets 10 views so the truth is all of you guys are stupid and insane because I'm preaching everything that has been foretold the climax of all the prophets and the stupid thing is because Peter said that they remember that guy that uh, uh, Moses was talking about in Deuteronomy 18 18 one like Moses that would come a kingdom age covenant giver of the law of love uh, one who will lead a new exodus of the wheat away from the tares and finally uh, one who would accuse the world of all having a false, unloving God. And so it's time that we get with the right program. For if we don't beat our swords into the sickle, this earth will be absolutely toast. Because the, this is the age of the days of Noah, exactly like the days of Noah. And Sir uh, um, Isaac Newton foretold Elijah 
I am the latter day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, who has embraced that destiny. And I tell you truly, truly, the original Elijah is still coming. He is one of the two witnesses and he it will be ministering death, not love. Unless the hearts of the fathers turn to the children, children to the fathers, this world is sideways. It is literally going to get a new ripped one. These are the days of Daniel 7, 5. Don't you think Elijah would be in the world when World War III is happening? Uh, the king of the north has invaded the king of the south, Daniel 11. That is a Latter-day prophecy. It says so in the Bible. Everybody's ignoring me. I've been preaching this for months and months. And the truth is that uh, Daniel 7, 5 is coming to pass too. Uh, the king, uh, uh, the king of the north is the great uh, bear the Soviet bear who's come out of the sea and in its three fangs he has che been chewing on Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk and now he has uh, annexed them into Russia now so that if Russia gets attacked now then he has the right to drop nuclear bombs to bring forth the days of Zechariah where eyes will consume away in the socket tongues consume away in the mouth and where flesh will consume away as people stand. That is thermonuclear war. There will be so few people left alive in Europe that one uh, man will have to serve as seven women, Isaiah 4 says. That is the utter death that is coming, but it does not have to happen. It is a conditional prophecy. Jeremiah 30, 24 says this, people. He says, it shall be considered in the latter days, says the Lord God Almighty. He says, I, the Lord, will return my fierce, terrifying wrath if my people of love will look to the crystal sea of the living waters of the uh, crystalline bluest ocean of his love that is bottomless. Uh, if people will do that and, and start uh, treating people nicer, this world can be salvaged and pulled from the edge of our total oblivion. So in this hour, it's time to realize that the ocean waves need to take away all of our pain back to its deepest blue because it's the ocean of God's love. And as we accept his love, increasingly our pain just automatically will always fade away. And if you want serenity, it is only found in the soothing sounds of that sapphire sea on high. And let it comfort you like a warm blanket in this hour of love's greatest power. So look at the sky. Does it, does it sapphire hue them? Uh, do you see it when you take a single breath? No. Are the stars drawn closer when you weep? No. The sky cannot be diminished. So, thus is it with the Lord's spirit of love. It is love that has no beginning and no end, as vast as the universe, endless thereof. I tell you, in the beginning was not the darkness, it was the light before the darkness. When Moses described the light, he was only talking about the light of our sun. And when all else fails, it's time to smile a lot because our Lord is sitting on the, the great white throne reflecting the sapphire sea and because of that hues of emerald, uh, green and blues are coming forth and in this hour I'm going to show you what he's doing now. The Lord is good and I praise him endlessly and as I stand up oh dear not good, not good going to break my little light. That would not be nice because I like my little light. Does anybody up there like my little light? Because if you do, maybe you should come and say, cool light. Look at my little friend. He's a little crystal birdie and he can fly. He's the emerald birdie who's flying over all of us. If we will but trust in the Lord to bring us something more beautiful than what we've ever had before, to follow his rainbow, to march into hell for even a heavenly cause, and to look at the eye of the storm and know that it is in the center of his love. For truly, truly, there is uh, no problem that love cannot solve. 
there is no problem that love is not the total solution to. And if and when the people of this world will recognize who the hell I am, because the truth is, people, I am the uh, Elijah of Malachi 4, 6, the covenant giver of Malachi 3, 1. I am your God. You are my people. When you hear that, all faith is totally obsolete on planet Earth because the faith of unconditional love and faith of unconditional forgiveness is the only flippant faith that's going to save this world. I am Daniel, the father of Chrislam, the new name for Israel, and they won't talk to me either. Everybody's friggin' absolutely deaf. I bring to the table everything that the world has been waiting for, and they only spit in my face. Not even kind enough to even friggin' say hello. A couple people have, but like four <laughs> in two years.